I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. These are the various lures I caught fish on uh, during this trip, and I'll have links to all of these in the description of the video. Oh, this trip started off great. Uh, unfortunately, you're not going to get to see this fish caught on video because it was caught about 4 o'clock in the morning, pitch black. And uh, But uh, yeah, that's a gorgeous fish. And that took the uh, half-ounce green uh, SNS John Skinner bucktail with a 4 and a quarter inch strip um, otter tail bait strip. So I had a couple other bass in the dark. Uh, I had fished two days prior. I actually posted a video on that trip. And that one was pretty slow. Uh, this one's a little better. Um, the waters are starting to warm up. We had two really nice sunny days uh, before this. And um, it, it did pick up the action a little bit. So one of the things I'm going to do this trip was the last trip, um, if you watch the video, I dragged a couple of different lures through the water just to look at the action and uh, see how they cast and things. But I really didn't fish them because um, there weren't a lot of fish around. I don't like testing lures when the fishing's poor. So um, because I had a couple of fish in the dark uh, and they seem to be hitting a little better, I did take a few casts with uh, several different lures. So we're going to take a look at that. But before I fish those lures, I'm going to stay with the standard here, which is uh, I like these half ounce bucktails. And you know, I'm really trying to establish that yeah, the bite's pretty decent. And at that point, um, I'll consider testing out uh, some other stuff. And this is late April, so the, the waters are cold. Uh, there's not much around in the way of size. But you know what? After a long winter, uh, just bending the rod, getting some hits sure feels good, especially on a morning like this. This is a real beauty. And I made it a point on this trip to try to angle that camera down a little bit so I could pick up the reel. I tried to do that on the previous trip. I kind of got it, but I think I got it this trip. So you'll be able to see exactly what the retrieve looks like. And this is the second trip I'm making with the new Tsunami Evic reel. And as I mentioned in the last video, uh, the noteworthy thing about that reel is that it's got a completely stainless steel drivetrain. So this is the smallest one they make. It's a 2000 size. Thank you. 
And this is my second trip uh, using the GoPro 7 camera. And I got it because I wanted the better image stabilization. But wow, the sound on this thing is just really excellent. So uh, quite happy with it. Okay, time to experiment a little bit. Uh, certainly, I've established that you know this fish here is hitting pretty well, and uh, there's a couple lures I want to try. And I, on the previous trip, just dragged them through the water and like made one cast each. So what I'll do on this trip is, and this is pretty typical of me testing lures. Uh, they get three casts, and um, if I you know can go three casts and not get hit, it's going to go back in the bag. And uh, these things are going to work out pretty well. So this is the uh, the Fishaholic Shad. I got it from J and H. It's got a half an ounce head on there that's made by S and S. And what impressed me the last trip is when I dragged it through the water fast, it didn't f go on its side. And that's something that sometimes these uh, paddle tail shad type lures will do. But now this this one stayed nice and straight. So hey, it gets three casts. And now the uh, cast clock gets set back to zero. Uh, yeah, I like that because I, I know I'm not missing out on any fish. It's, it's nice to try, s test out something and get a fish on it. So, uh, all right, it gets three more. Okay, clearly a hit. You know, this is something, yeah, I really prefer bucktails. This is one of the reasons. I always feel like I get better, more consistent hookups with a bucktail. But you know what? Lures like this have an advantage uh, also because that paddle tail makes a vibration in the water. So, you know, that can make a difference. But, um, all right, so I took a couple more casts with that, and I want to move on to something else. So this is a Savage Gear Swim Squid, and if you recall the picture of the lures at the beginning of this video, it looks like a squid. I mean, this is what Savage Gear is kind of does extremely well, is they've got stuff that is very realistic lo looking. So this looks like a squid. The weird thing they do with this squid, it's like a three-quarter ounce, and they rig it two ways. Uh, one is what I would call the right way, where it comes in tail first, and then there's the other way, which, um, yeah, you're going to get to see that, and uh, I can't, I shouldn't make fast judgments about things by looking at them, because um, both directions, both ways they rig this, it works, so this is kind of an intriguing lure for me. You're going to see me using this uh, on other trips as well. Hmm. All right, uh, cast clock back to zero on this one, too. Um, you notice I use a little bit different action on this. The reason is that this thing really does swim. You know, bucktail comes in straight. Uh, so does the, the shad lure. This guy, it, it's got like a wobbling action to it. So as it swings down current, if you just reel steady, what's going to happen is it's going to come up higher in the water column, and 
it's going to be up near the surface and you know at this time of year especially like this area low and slow seems to work so what I'm doing is giving it a chance to drop back down each time I'm intentionally trying to keep that lure a little bit deeper All right, three hits on two casts with this lure. Um, dude, I missed two of those hits, though. Yeah, I think part of that is uh, that different kind of action I'm putting on. Hey, you know what? These are like the first three casts I'm taking with this lure, so uh, I've got a little bit to learn about it. So I'm thinking of this as the reverse squid. It's a, a savage gear like the other one, but this time it's hooked in the front. Uh, if you've ever watched a squid dart away from something, it goes tail first. This one's uh, rigged to go head first, but what happens is if you give it a, a, a jerk and then some slack, it actually like goes backwards. It, it, it's, it, it goes on its own, which is a really strange kind of unique action. Um, so yeah, hey, I'm going to give it a try. The first thing I found interesting was that with the weight um, towards the tail, this thing casts like a it casts like a sinker. I mean, it just flies. In fact, it was going too far. It was basically going to the other side uh, into very shallow water. I had to cut back on the cast a little bit. So the retrieve here is, you know what? I'm going to twitch it, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Yeah, uh, you know, try to. Um, capitalize on that funny action where it actually will swim away from you after you twitch it and uh, we'll see And I don't want to give the impression that there's so many fish here that you know, they're going to hit whatever I'm throwing. Uh, I can tell you that what I always do is, as I'm testing these different lures, in between, uh, I'm also throwing the bucktail. I'm just not showing that because the video is going to get too long. Um, and, you know, yeah, I'm catching a couple of fish in the bucktail, but it is certainly not hot and heavy. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, these couple of lures that I tried. Uh, certainly they're catching fish at a time that uh, yeah, you, you have to work for them a little bit. Alright, I feel like I've done enough uh, experimentation so I'm going to go back to one of my standards. Uh, the two things that I use most here are the bucktail and the small pencil popper and um, yeah, I've got to head to work soon so I'm going to finish up with um, something that I know works well well after sunrise because a lot of times the action here is best close to sunrise 
this fish is tiny, uh, but it did hit right away on the first pencil cast, so I was pretty happy about that. Although I did throw the pencil a little bit earlier and hadn't done anything on it. Okay, a little bigger than the other ones. Uh, you know what? It often works out that the bigger fish that I get here do hit the pencil poppers. Uh, certainly not a big fish by any means, but hey, it's all relative. For this trip and uh, where I am at this point in the calendar, yep, this is okay. No complaints. Alright, the bite pretty much shut down after this fish. Looked like it was going to get going, but I was better off. I really needed to get to work, and I will just never get there if these things keep hitting. So, alright, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe.